All right, so today we're going to talk about to build or not to build your turbo Subaru EJ engine. Um, what, what we mean by build block is to go in there and instead of putting in a new short block built by Subaru to include aftermarket components such as forged pistons, uh, forged rods, and, and so on and so forth. Um, especially if you had a failure uh, of, your, of your stock engine, it seems like kind of the, the immediate uh, answer to that problem is to put in an aftermarket uh, or an engine with aftermarket components. But that's not necessarily the case, especially depending on what your, what your goals are. Um, and so, we, you know, when we work with our customers, we usually go over a lot of different factors as far as what they're, what they're doing with the car and, and to try and, you know, come up with the best solution to get the car up and running again or, you know, to give them the engine that, that will meet the goals that they have. And there's, there's really three primary considerations, which are budget, power goals, and reliability and longevity that you need to look at make sure that you know what your what your parameters are for each one of those three components and the engine that you end up with meets all three of those goals so i mean the most obvious one is budget you know obviously if you've had an engine failure nobody plans for that so you've got to kind of look at well here's the funds that are available um, and make sure you know i mean you can you can list out all of your wants but make sure that your budget meets your wants and one of the things that we're really adamant about is unless you've had an absolute complete teardown of your of your existing engine and you know exactly which components are damaged and what is usable what isn't usable you really want to have an extra five hundred or thousand dollars beyond what your what your estimate is for parts because as you're going through the build it's entirely possible that you're going to run into things like uh, damage to the cylinder head damage to valves cams AVCS solenoids um, heck timing covers uh, timing components various things that come up that you're going to need to add, you know, in addition to what your estimate is. Uh, and if you're going to, you know, properly finish that build, you're going to need to add those, those components. And so you want to have that, that safety net because the, the last thing that you want to do is, is start down the road of a build and about halfway or especially at the end have to make a compromise or, or cut some corners just to get the thing done and get your car working again because that's where it can be really detrimental to the, the end result of the build that you get. So, so you know, really lay out all your wants um, and, and get a good estimate as far as what that parts cost is going to be. Make sure you've got that cushion and make sure that the build that you, you, you start going down um, or the build that you start making you know, fits that budget. Um, and if your budget just doesn't reach quite as far as you want it to go, then that's where you probably want to reconsider and, and simplify things. Um, when you're talking about power, uh, depending on what your power goal is, there, there's a pretty finite limit as far as what a stock uh, 2.5 liter Subaru block can handle. And with a good tune, that's about 350 wheel horsepower. So if your goal is beyond that, 375, 400 plus, then that's we're pretty much at a minimum. You're going to have to put in forged pistons, and of course, the more that you go in, forged rods, um, you know, bottom end work. It, you know, the, the higher you go power goal wise, then the more components you need to have to make sure that you're, you're fixing all of the possible weak links so you can make that power um, reliably for as long as possible. If your power goal is less than that, then uh, 350 wheel horsepower, then a stock super short block is a perfectly viable option. And um, really, if your power goal is 350 or below, the stock block is probably going to be your best option when you consider the next parameter, which is reliability and longevity. So from that standpoint, one of the questions that you, know, you should ask yourself is how long do, do I want this engine to last? Do I want it to last 100,000 miles and beyond? Or, or is that not as much of a priority? Um, generally speaking, what we, what we say is that the average life expectancy of, of a fully built trip lock is about 60 to 80,000 miles. Um, can you hit 100,000 miles with a built trip lock? Sure, but I would definitely say that, you know, from our experience, from our customers' experience, that that's the exception and not the rule. So if you really want to make sure that you're going to do this, kind of do this once for, for however long you're going to have the car and get 100,000 plus miles out of it, turning the power goals down and staying with the stock trip lock is going to be a much better fit for that goal um, versus putting in forged pistons. And that's, you know, something people often think is, well, if I really want the, the engine to last a long time, especially if you had something like a ring line failure, well, I need the forged piston. Well. Not necessarily. Um, because of the metal 
because of the power that the pistons are designed to handle, there's, there's looser piston wall clearances with pretty much any forged piston versus a stock one. And what that does is it, it creates more wear in the cylinders themselves and on the skirts of the pistons over the life of the engine. And that's what shortens the life of those forged engines. So really, I mean, when you're talking about longevity, you know, there's, there's forged or not forged, but then the, the biggest key component of that is a good quality tune. You, if you really want, no matter what engine, if you want to make sure you get the most life out of it, the most miles out of it as possible, you absolutely have to have a good quality tune that matches all the components on the car, so on and so forth. Um, that's going to be the one critical component that, again, when you're talking about budget, you have to make sure that you budget in for that good quality tune, um, you know, good break-in and a good tune thereafter. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, if you want to build a fun car, you can't do it with stock short block either. Um, you know, really, in these Subarus with, you know, WR Access STI, if you get to 300, 350 wheel horsepower, somewhere in that range, uh, with the stock short block, it can be an absolutely fun car, fast car. It can do a lot. And um, one of the things I would say, um, too, as far as power goals, you know, if, you have, if you're starting from zero, if you had an engine failure of a car that, that's close to a stock power level, you know, try and go out there and, and ride along in cars or something. Talk to people that have, you know, built cars, you know, 300, 325, 350, 400, 450 horsepower and just see what they're like because really, the, the fun quotient is very high, even still at that 300 to 325 or so power level. It's, it can be a really, really fun car, and it might actually fit all of your needs, and then you get the longevity and, and keeps your cost down. Um, so uh, that's something to look into. If you make the big power numbers, those cars can absolutely be a lot of fun too, but there's a lot more that goes into them when you, if you start talking about daily driving. You know, if you're gonna make, wanna make a really big power number, if it's your only car, it's definitely something you want to think hard about. If it's a daily driver, if it sees a lot of miles every year. Um, you know, there's a lot more that goes into living with a forged engine. You've got to be much more diligent about maintenance, about fluids, checking your oil, making sure that you never run low on oil, um, and just kind of the, the finickiness of the car, especially when you get to the 500 plus horsepower level. Um, you know, it's something where you know, it might run great in the summertime, come winter and it's five degrees out, the car's not so happy. Um, so there's, there's a lot of aspects about living with the car that you might want to consider there too. Um, so there's a lot to go into it fundamentally, but you know, to, to sum up, you know, again, you want to make sure that you lay out your goals, you know, work with the shop, work with your builder. If you can, tear the whole engine down first and really get a good estimate of what, what your parts cost is and make sure that as you start the build, you've got the, the budget to hit, you know, all your goals that you want. Have a, have a good power goal going in. You know, make sure that you, you really have kind of a sense of, of where you want to land and that you've got all the components to hit that power goal and do so reliably and, and uh, you know, again, with that little bit of a cushion. And, you know, is, have a good sense of, you know, where, how long you want the engine to last. You know, what, what is your goal that far in regards to that? So that, you know, by the time you get the engine built, tuned, broken in, and you're driving it, that it, it lasts as long as you want and you get the the uh, all the all the fun out of the car, and, and you don't have a surprise two, three, four years into the build that you know hey now it's it's time to go in there and freshen things up again. So again, it's a big decision. There's a lot of things to consider, but you know hopefully that helps kind of give you a list of um, you know pros and cons of, of both both paths so that you can make the right decision that's going to be the best fit for your car. So thanks for watching. Um, if this if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please drop a like. And uh, stay tuned for more Flatiron Studio Tech Tips.